Okay, so in this tutorial, I want to show you how to create this cool looking cover page inside Microsoft Word. And it's quite simple, just a geometric shape, some text and page background color. But I will try to show you as many tips and tricks along the way as possible. So let's get started. I will start in the blank new document in Microsoft Word. And the first things first, if you plan to print this page in the future, it may be a good idea to set the page size. So in the layout, you can open the size drop down menu. And if you are inside US, it will most likely be something like letter or legal. I'm actually in Europe, so A4 is for me. So that's covered. And the next thing we want to do is to set the page background color. And before we actually do so, I will jump into the design tab and switch the color theme. So in the color drop downs, I have a quite custom ones. You can ignore those. But in the office section, we have quite a few color themes to choose from. And I will probably go with the violet today. So I will select colors violet. And then for the page background color, I will open the drop down menu and set this page background color to be this light gray, which works for me in this case. The next thing we want to do is to set the page borders. And there is actually the button for this. So we can see that there we have the page borders. If I open it, I can set the color, I can set it to white, I can set the width. But unfortunately, the width is limited to only being up to six points, which may not be enough in our case. So let me just click those four sides, hit the OK button. And you can see it's not touching the edges of the page and it's also very light. So if I go to page borders, I can set the margins to be zero for all four sides, which will move those close to the sides of the page. But again, six points is not enough in our case. We want the border to be much thicker. So in the page borders, I will select none and we will do this in a different way. And by different way, I mean drawing the rectangle with the line style, custom line style. So I'll insert a new shape being the rectangle which is this one. And I will try to draw it in the shape or in the size of the paper as closely as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but somehow closely. Then I will right click and select format shape and set the fill to be no fill and line to be side line in the color of white. And I don't think that there is any limitation. I can go like 200, but I actually don't need to be 200. I can, I only need like 40 or maybe 50 points. That looks perfectly fine in this case. Okay, so we have the page background color and the page border. The next thing would be to draw this hexagon. So I will select insert shapes hexagon, which is this shape. And usually when you draw a shape with the shift key being pressed, it will force the aspect ratio to be the original one. So I will do this as well. But I already know that the hexagon is actually not the true hexagon because those lines, uh, those sides don't have the same uh, length. Let me first uh, rotate this shape by holding the shift key and clicking this rotation button so it will snap to a certain degrees like so and maybe make it a little bit bigger and I want to have a true hexagon and I know that those uh, you know those angles are not right because for a true hexagon this should be 30 degrees so let me actually draw a new shape being the line I'll draw it with the shift key being pressed so it's a horizontal line set the line color to maybe black so I can see it better right click and select more layout options and set the size in the size tab, set the rotation to be 30 degrees and then move it next to the hexagon. And you can see that, you know, the angle is not matching. So I'll grab this yellow handle and just move it down like so until I can see that, you know, the angles are almost identical. You can see it's, they are not, but I can zoom in and maybe change the handle or drag the handle a little bit more like so. And now I'm happy with the result. So I will select the line and delete the line. And it was necessary because later on when I will draw the individual lines connecting the shape, if I would start with the default hexagon, it will not work out properly. So for this hexagon, I want to set the line to no line. And for the fill, I want to use a picture. I already have this picture open in here in, in my browser. So I can just click this picture and either set the save image as, or I can also copy the image, just copy the image in the clipboard, which will work as well. So copy the image jump back into Microsoft Word and for the fill I will set the picture or texture fill and this is the default texture fill so I'll click the clipboard to use the image for clipboard and few things are wrong first the image is rotated so I will se select the rotate with shape or I uncheck the rotate with shape and the second thing is it still tries to fit into our shape which is not what we want we want to keep the aspect ratio and we will do this by clicking the tile picture as texture making the size a little bit small, maybe like 45 degrees for both X and Y and align it in the center. And now we can reposition it using the offset X and offset Y values. So maybe set it to 60 or maybe like 70 to move it more to the bottom and maybe make it even smaller like so. 
so I'm happy with the result. Okay, that's what I want. The next thing we are missing is I have those lines going across the shape. So let's draw those lines and we can do it in a few different ways. I will, we can either draw like a vertical line and rotate it like I've done, uh, like I just did in a few minutes ago, or we can just try to, you know, match the, or uh, draw the line. So it's touching those vertices like, so like this one, then the next line will be going like this. And the last line, last line will be from top to bottom. And in this case, I will probably hold the shift key. So it's snapping to the uh, certain degrees, select all three lines with the shift key being pressed and set the line color to be the light gray and maybe the line width to maybe two points. And you know, I also have those lines, which forms like a triangle so I can draw those as well. So insert shapes line in same case, I will draw this line. Then I will draw this line. And lastly, I will draw the, the bottom line like so. Now I want to use the very same line style and the easy thing, easier thing, the easiest thing to do is to use the format painter. So it works in the way that I will first select the line from which I want to apply the style, click the format painter. Now click on the line to which I want to apply the style, maybe this one. And if I double click the format painter, it will, it will be selected or will be kept selected. So now I can click multiple lines like one after the other. And when I'm happy with the result and if finished, I can just click this again or press the escape key on my keyboard. That will just uh, deselect the format painter button for me. In my original document, I have the small hexagon covering the face. So I can do this as well. I can select the hexagon, copy paste it, make it smaller like so, set the fill to be just a solid fill of the same color as the background and try to fit this into, into the triangle. Again, I'm holding the shift key on my keyboard just so it's scaled proportionally. So once we are happy with the shape and the picture, we can move on to add some text. So let me uh, type in something and it, you can see it starts typing in the top left corner, which is not the place we want it to be. So I will just delete this one and press the enter key. But what usually happens is when you press the enter key, you will move everything. So the solution is to not press the enter key, but instead zoom out and double click with your mouse to place the text cursor in a different spot like so. And now you can start typing in here. So I'll type in now you see me and I will change language to be English. So just so I don't see, you know, those warnings, I will select the text. And I'm using a demo version of the font Miller extra bold. You can get it from internet. I will post a link in the description. I'm using the font size 48, have it center aligned and you can see it a little bit to the right because the you know alignment, the first light indent is set to some value based on where I click with my cursor. So I'll change it back to be same as the margins. And I want this to be all caps. So I'll click this button and set the case to uppercase. And the, for the font color, I'll most likely go with some very dark blue, maybe this one. Okay, now I want the line below this text. And the usual trick, which is enabled by default, is if you type in three minus signs or three dashes, press the enter key, it will turn this into the line. And you know, by default, it doesn't look that that great. So I will just uh, click anywhere on this text and open the properties for the borders and shading. You can see this line is being selected. I want the color to be some kind of faded gray and the line width to be much bigger, like two and something points. Nothing has changed because I have to click this button two more times to actually update what I want to change with those settings. Click the OK button and now you can see it's much bolder and different color. So for the next line, I will type in, type in now you don't. And for this line, I will change the text again to be faded like so. Maybe for the line, I want this to have to share the same color, which was, I believe, this one. So again, double click on the line, change it and we are fine. The last piece which we are missing is I have had like the corner being cut off. So I will just duplicate this shape and there are multiple ways of doing so. One way is to hold the control key on my keyboard and just move the shape, which will create a copy. I will set the fill either in the format ribbon, like shape fill to be uh, white, or I can change it in the format shape in here to be white, make it maybe a little bit bigger and just move it to the right top of the page. So we can see now the, now the corner is being cut off. I can move everything more to the bottom, like pressing the enter key. And if I want to move this, 
I can select the select objects and just draw the selection rectangle. Now it now every object will be selected. I can open the selection pane just to double check. Maybe I missed some missed some of the shapes like this one and this one. So I'll select those as well. And what I can do is I can select format group and group everything into one group. So now when you select everything, anything, you will just select this group and you can move this group, you know, up or down wherever you want this to be. And I think that's looking fine. So the last thing to say if you use actually let me just sorry it's just trying to change this to something which i don't yeah it doesn't doesn't include this symbol in the font so it's not drawing it so if you plan to use it for like a bigger document you probably don't want this background color to be used for any other page and to do so you actually cannot use the page background color feature so if you jump to the design tab we will just turn up the page background color, set the no color, and instead we will use what we already have. We already have this rectangle which goes around the whole page, which is this one, and I can just set the fill to be solid fill, being the same color as was the page background color previously. Now we don't see the text because this is above the text, so we have to click this button and set the rectangle to be actually behind the text so we can see the text. So now we have the cover page with a different page background color, some graphics and text, and on the next page you can start typing whatever whatever if i can type okay and that's it that's how you create a nice looking cover page inside microsoft word in no time thank you for watching and see you next time bye